So I've shown you guys some fun stuff in Adobe Muse CC with the new parallax scrolling features, but uh, I've skipped a couple of the basics, and there's one of them that I want to talk about more in depth right now, and that's the key position of, uh, of the scroll effect. Now, I've got a fun little example here to try to kind of create an analogy out of it, but it might not be the best analogy. I'd love some feedback in the comments. Uh, but essentially, if you guys have tried playing with the parallax scrolling and you've tried having two objects scroll at different speeds, you've probably noticed that a regular object and a fast scrolling or slow scrolling object seem to come together and line up with one another at sort of an arbitrary time. But that time's not arbitrary. You're in control of that. You get to decide when your objects converge with one another, when they reach the point on the screen that you're looking at in the design view, and you can make sure that what you get is somewhat predictable. So what we're looking at here, I've got two race cars, and I've got a pinned finish line that doesn't scroll, and I'll go into the preview here so you can see what that looks like. So they scroll at the same speed, my finish line stays put, and they reach the top of the browser at exactly the same moment. Now if I make one of them go faster than the other, let's grab this red car here, we'll go to our effects, and we'll make sure the scroll motion's turned on, which it is. I'm gonna set this to scroll vertically twice as fast. That's gonna be the number two, and I've got this locked together with the motion after key because I don't want it to change speed. I'm just going to have it scroll twice as fast all along. Now let's see what that looks like when we preview it. See, the car's not there because really it needs to arrive on the screen at some time. And if it's scrolling twice as fast, then it needs kind of to give everything else a head start, right? Think about a receiver in football running out for the pass. The uh, quarterback does not throw the ball the moment the receiver begins to run. The receiver runs slower than the ball gets thrown, so the receiver gets a head start, and then there's a point at which the ball gets thrown much, much faster and meets the receiver at some spot on the field. So let's scroll. Let's see where these cars meet. So I'm scrolling along, scrolling along. It looks like they become dead even just before the finish line. Not at the finish line, not at the top of the browser, the red car is ahead by the time they get to the top of the browser. So this seems just a little bit arbitrary, right? They're not side by side in the same position as my design view. Otherwise, they'd be side by side right now. So what exactly is going on? This is where the key position come in, comes into play. So I'm going to select my red car. And there's this little, this little leader sticking out. There's this little line with another little line and a handle that I can grab. That is the key position, and what that position means is where will the top of the browser be when this object is in this position as it is in the design view. In the design view, it's right next to the green car, but when I go to play it back, it's not right next to the green car when it starts out because what this represents is that the browser is going to have to be scrolled to here before the car will be next to the green car. But the green car won't be here anymore because we will have scrolled. So it may seem a little confusing, but let's do an example. I'm going to drag it to the very, very top into a position of zero. So now when I go to preview it, they're already lined up because I said when the browser, the top of the browser, is in the unmoved, unscrolled zero position, I want the car to be where it is in the design view. So now this matches my design view. But when I begin to scroll, then the car pulls ahead. Now if I want them to reach the very, very top of the browser at the same time, then I want the browser top to be lined up with the nose of the car, not all the way at the top of the browser. So I'm going to pull this down. And now what I'm saying is be lined up with the green car when the top of the browser bumps the nose of the red car, because I'm telling it based on the position of the red car. I'm going to preview it again. No red car, no red car. Up oh, here he comes, here he comes, and they are lined up at the top of the browser. So what I'm doing with the key position is I'm saying, where will the top of the browser be? Reserve battery power, that's embarrassing. Where will the top of the browser be when this image or this shape or this object gets to the place that I see it in right now? Will it be at the very, very top? 
unmoved? Will it be somewhere in the middle? Or will it be bumping against the object itself when that object is in the position that we see it in right now? It's definitely something to play with. It's very confusing. But the idea is if you've got something coming in at a faster or slower speed, then it can't really line up with everything else anymore. You've now sort of broken the rules. You've changed the rules. So you have to tell the computer at what moment, how far do I have to scroll in order for this object to line up the way I see it in the design view? How far down do I have to scroll? Now one little tidbit I want to throw at you also, when you go to effects and you look here, this position, 204 pixels, this is relative to the top of the design view, the top of the design of the web page. It is not relative to the object. When you're dragging it by the handle, you get to see both. Do you guys see that where it says browser top 241, but it also says object top negative 161? You get to see both right here. For some reason, Adobe has not included the ability to type in when you want this object to get where it is based on the object itself. It makes you type it in based on how far, how many pixels the uh, user or viewer has scrolled down from the top of the web page. Play with it. Play with it, play with it, play with it. It took me a while to understand this. I sort of got the arbitrary result I wanted through arbitrary experimentation, but you'll get it. I promise. Play with it. Experiment, and uh, there will be less guesswork. You'll be able to type in a number, cross your fingers, and have it actually work first try once you get familiar with it. That's pretty fun. It's pretty cool. So stay tuned, I got more coming at you, and please subscribe if you enjoy these videos. I hope to do plenty more of them.